Hi, I'm Jerry from Body Tree Ballet. Today we have with us a 10-year-old dancer called Bella. She does ballet as well as jazz. Now she was sent to us because her teacher noticed that her foot was rolling in quite a fair bit when she, whenever she turns out. And at the same time, the teacher would like her to improve her proprioception or her awareness of her feet in dance. Now before we design a program that's specific to her, her body, I'd like to have a chat with her to find out what she's going through in her dance. At the same time, do a, a very simple lower body assessment to see if we can pick out anything in the body that we can take into consideration for the program. Now let's get started. I spoke to Bella earlier and I noticed her not so favorite moves in dance usually involves movement that needed her to have an awareness of her feet or body in space. So I felt that today we could make use of some tools, three in fact, to bring more sensory input to her body so that she can have better motor output. Now the first tool we have here is a, it's called the power plate. This is a vibrational device. We use a vibration device because 70% of the nerves on the surface of our skin, our hands, our feet, responds well to vibration. And there has been many sportsmen around the world that use this device to help them prepare better, to help them optimize their performance in sports. Next, a mat that I have here, which is a textured mat. This was created by Dr. Emily Splicko, functional podiatrist and human movement specialist. Now, if you see this texture, but there's small little pricky thing that comes out. They are actually 1mm apart. Um, they stimulate the outermost nerve on the surface of our skin. Right? Um, if you think about Braille, how the blind actually read words by touch of this uh, pricky thing that comes out of words. In the same way, this is going to do to our feet. Now, there's been studies that shows that textured insoles which dancers wear over time it has carry over effects to their dance so it actually increases their dance performance even though they, they were not wearing this texture insoles during dance um, they were wearing it before dance last two we have here with us is the ball i'm sure all of you are very familiar with this ball we use it for myofascial release but what less of us know is this actually stimulates another nerve right a nerve that responds well to shape change of shape when this ball goes over to the surface of our skin there's change in shape on our feet on our hands and this also stimulates uh, bring more stimulus into the body now we have three different types of tools to bring more sensory input to our body what we hope to achieve with bella is this will give her better sensory input more sensory input, more accurate sensory input that help her to perceive her body better in space, perceive alignment better in space as well, so that she can have better motor output, better correction of what her teacher wants her to make. Any difference in both feet? 
what 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 kind of difference do you feel? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does it feel light? Yeah. Okay. Good. Why don't we? Up. Okay. okay. Is it pressing another time? Okay, it started. Okay, why don't you put your hands here? Flex and point. So as we flex, we want to allow our calf, right, to move at its most. Yes, and then point at its most. Nerves on the surface of our skin responds a lot to vibration. In fact, you know, 70% of the nerves on the surface of our skin respond very well to vibration. And that's why we are using vibration to help Bella improve her proprioception, improve her sensation of what the calf is doing when she's doing a flex and a point. Is it easier to jump on one foot? Easier? We're going to place the ball between the heel and we're going to raise our heels off now at the highest part of the lift you can you see my my heel is coming inwards a little and then it comes back down again i come up then it comes inwards so it's like i call it cupping the ball like cupping the bottom of the ball and then back. bella's teacher actually mentioned uh, to us that bella's foot tend to roll in Quite a fair bit. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to teach her how to activate the muscles that lifts her arch through this exercise. Now you notice the heel is cupping inwards when it comes down, but that doesn't mean the foot will turn out as she cups the ball. You notice her foot is still straight, her two big toes are still pointing forward. Okay, this strengthens her muscles. We call it the, this muscle the tibialis posterior, an important muscle that lifts the arches of the firing bella. Yes, it's right. Where, where is it tiring? Yes, the calf, right? The heel up to the calf area. You don't move, right? Yeah, we're not going to move yet. Okay, so stay right here. Is it heavy? Is it very heavy? No, okay. So stay right here. So the reformer gives you a chance, right, for you to adjust your legs. Make sure it's at the center. So you can see your legs. There you are. Very good. Maintain that. Now we're going to turn out with both legs. And we're going to come back into parallel. Right, and two. And back. And three. And you will notice that the foot wants to move one way, isn't it? So you're trying to keep, do your best to keep that in the center and turn back in. So we notice that a lot of times, right, with the reformer, the, the dancer could actually look at her own feet, right? Bella can actually look at her own feet, right, to see if she's deviating. That's one, right? That brings a lot of awareness to whether where the center is. The next thing is also because the feet is in the air, right, as, as opposed to being on the floor, right? So it allows Bella to concentrate on creating the turnout from her hip joint, okay? 
And if you notice, I also did mention to Bella that her ankle bones uh, will not be touching each other here. That's because her thighs, right? If you look at her thighs, they were trying to cross over quite a fair bit. So I was just trying to give her a chance to be more balanced on both sides, allowing the rotation, right, through her hip joint. Okay, let's continue, Bella. Now earlier in my assessment at the beginning, I noticed that, that Bella has a little of limb length discrepancy on both sides. Now it could be due to tightness or it could be structural. Um, hence, I decided to choose this piece on the reformer with the feet in the straps so that any difference in length will not affect her performance. With Bella's feet in the air, right, it helps her to develop better proprioception of how she uses her hip. Right? In this case, in an external rotation. Now, if you notice earlier, Bella's feet were deviating to one side, right? And when she noticed it right away, she made a correction to bring it back to the center. Now, this process actually is relying on her different muscles to co-activate to make that correction. And every correction that she does gets stored into part of brain, a limbic part of the brain, as a past experience. With enough repetitions, Bella will be able to tell more distinctly whenever she's on the floor that there's a difference in her alignment or if she did not have create enough external rotation or turn out from her hip. This is also what we call muscle memory. And with muscle memory, of course, it's going to help us to improve the ability to do that. So we did that whole piece in a slower speed because we need to give Bella time, right? to first recognize that the feet is off alignment right? and for her to also make the correction herself co-activating her muscles to make that correction now once she has gotten enough repetition and it becomes part of her what we call muscle memory then we can start to move on to a faster speed to make it more relevant um, to the speed that a dancer is moving on the ground I was using the ball and having Bella's feet in parallel so that when she do the rises, she could activate the important arch muscles which is called the tibialis posterior. So she has done that very successfully and now if you look at this, we are doing it in a turnout which is more relevant to a ballet or a dance. And I place a bigger ball uh, with the intention of keeping the concept the same so that she can get, she understands and does the same thing. Okay, let's see how Bella does here. Okay, so you notice that um, with that, Bella is really doing really well. For someone whose foot you know, tends to be unstable when she's doing the footwork, that was a lot better. She has a lot more control. And when I took the ball off, actually she did maintain um, her turnout as well as her rises. It's just that I'm not getting her to her maximum range yet so that she gets a lot more feedback from this process versus just trying to get to the highest point. So we have just finished an hour session with Bella. Today was really about bringing more awareness and proprioception to her joints, uh, mainly her feet, her ankle joint, as well as her hip joint. Now we highly encourage all uh, dancers who are injured to get into this process, right? So that they can prevent further injuries. But that doesn't mean that if you're not injured, you can't start. We still highly encourage you to start as early as you can. And that's because, just imagine this, 
for a dancer to be dancing like hundreds and thousands of hours you want to make sure that hundred or thousand hours of training you are reinforcing good alignment bringing more strength to the joint versus reinforcing misalignments that can be habits that's really very hard to undo and i'm sure a lot of dance teacher will, will agree with this yeah, that once a habit has been formed it is always a bigger challenge trying to undo those habits especially if those habits bring injuries